Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time, please take a few seconds and click on the subscribe button. Or even if it's not your first time, please subscribe and that'll help me continue to provide these videos to help students complete their SIMNET projects. So today I'm going to be doing the Access 2021 Chapter 2 Guided Project 2-1. So we'll begin by downloading the start file. So click on the start file link there and open it once it's downloaded. And then we're going to dismiss this security risk banner because we know it comes from a trusted source. And we're on to step number four. For step four, we're going to create a new table in uh, and set the field properties. So we're going to click on the Create button, and we're going to click on the Table Design button. And then we're going to add new fields into the branch, into the table. So the first field name is Branch. So we just enter it in that field name window there, and it's going to be uh, short text data type. And then we'll tab over to the description and the description is unique branch name. Whoops, the branch is lowercase b. Like that. And then we're going to click the primary key button. So with that selected, we're going to go up here and click on the primary key button. And you get this little primary key icon to indicate that that field is a primary key. And then we're going to press tab to move to the next row. And uh, when we're in the next row, we're going to add the remaining fields um, that are contained in table 2-18. So the first one's going to be address. So tab over, and it's going to be short text. It's going to be street address of the branch, like that. And then tab down to the next row, and it's going to be city. And tab over, short text, and that's branch city, like that. Well, lowercase c, I guess. And then tab over to the next one. It's going to be state. And it's going to be short text. So tab through that. And that's going to be branch state. Oops. Keep putting the uppercase on the second one. Okay. Branch state. And then tab down and zip. ZIP all uppercase. And it's going to be short text. And that's going to be branch zip code. So this time I did make it uppercase for, uppercase for the code. And then we're going to have first name or phone, rather. Excuse me. So tab down. And the next one's going to be phone. And that's going to be short text as well because phone has other than other, characters other than numbers. And that's going to be the branch space main phone number. Okay. And then tab down one more time and it's going to be date opened. Uppercase O, all one string. And that's going to be date slash time. So we're going to select the date slash time data type and tab over. And that's the date the branch first opened. Okay, and then we're going to click the Save button. So we'll right click. I guess we can click Save here and then put the table. You could also right click on the tab and select Save. And it's going to be branches. This is, yes, branches. And then click OK. And then it's a good idea to periodically save a table when you're creating it so you don't lose your work. And then we're going to click the row selector to select the branch field. So up here. Click on the row selector, which is that gray box just to the left of the row. And then type 30 in the field size property box. So here on the field properties, we're going to put 30 for the field size. And then we're going to set the required property to yes. So uh, down here, it's already set to yes, so we don't need to worry about that. And then click the row selector to select the address field. So select the address field. And then change the remaining field properties in the branches table using the information in table 2-19. So address is going to be 40 for the field size, and it's going to be required yes. So we need to make this yes. And then the city, so we just tab down, or we can just use the arrow to go down. Whoops. Yes, we have to click on the city row selector. And on the city, it's going to be a field size of 20. And it's going to be required yes. So right now it's required no. So we can just type yes over that. and then enter and then for the state so select the state row selector it's going to be a field size of two so like that and default value so we're going to put a default value of california it's apparently most of them are from california and then click required yes okay i've just found it's easier to just type it in than to click on that pull down and that's the state then on to zip it's going to be a field size of nine and it's going to be yes for required. 
and for the phone it's going to be 10 for the field size and it is going to be yes as a required field and then finally for the date opened it's going to be um, a medium date so we're going to select the format here and select medium date and it's going to be required as well and hit enter and then we're going to save the table so just click on the save button or we can right click here and click save and we're on to step six we're going to create an input mask for the zip field so select the zip field click on the row selector for the zip field click the property box for input mask property and then uh, click the build button to launch the input mask wizard so and so just that ellipsis over there on the input mask and um, we're going to select the zip code input mask and then click the next button and then click next button without making any changes and then select without the symbols with the mask in the mask make or like this go ahead and select that click next and then click finish and then save the table again and then we're on to step seven we're going to create an input mask for the phone field so this time we're going to select the phone field row selector go to the input mask and then click on the pull down and that'll open up the input mask wizard and then we're going to select the phone number for the input okay mask and click next then click next without making any changes and that's good without the symbols and the mask like this and then click finish and save the table again and we're on to step eight so step eight we're going to enter records in the branches table so we're going to change to the data sheet view of the branches table so we're going to right click and select data sheet view and we're going to enter the records in table 2-20 so first one is cameron park for the branch and we tab over and the address is 3360 coach lane we're just making sure that we do this right and cameron park is the city and tab over in the state is california so just tab through that because it's the default the zip is 95682 and then uh, 85, yeah, 8454, like that. And the phone number is 530. Notice because we have input masks here, we don't have to do all the dashes and stuff. We just enter the number 672-3232. And the date opened is 1 1 slash 1 slash 1 slash 2020. We could use the pull down there because it's a date. We can select it from here, but a lot of times it's just easier to type it in. Okay, and then we're going to do that for the other entries there. There's two other entries. I'm going to pause the video while I do that. Okay, so I entered the other two branches in there, and hopefully I got it right. Um, I'd like to make this bigger so I can make sure. So um, I'm trying to make sure I have the addresses right. Um, 72 in Toma street hashtag b1 okay i think we're good and then we're going to save and close the table and then close it and then we're on to step number nine we're going to modify the department field in the employees table to use a combo box so we're going to open the employees table in design view so we're going to right click on the employees table select the design view and then we're going to click the data type property box of the department field so select the department field and uh, select the data type here and um, select the lookup wizard because we're going to put a lookup table here and we want to select um, i will type in the values that i want so we want to select that bottom radio button and select next and then click the first cell in column one and we're going to put administration and then press the down arrow and we're going to put um, health and benefits h-e-a-l and benefits and then the down arrow and the next one's going to be insurance sales and then down arrow and then property and casualty property and casualty and make sure we spell that right and then click the next button and uh, click the limit to list checks box right there and then click the finish button and then save the table and then if it's if prompted to test the existing data against the new rules click yes 
we weren't prompted, so I think we're okay. So for step 10, we're going to verify the existence of a foreign key and create a one-to-many relationship between the branches and employees tables. The branch field is the common field across the two tables. It's the primary key in the branches table. So open both tables in design view. So uh, branches, we're going to open that in design view as well. And then we're going to um, click on the edit the description property of the branch field in the employees table. So select the employees table. So for the description, we're going to uh, it's, we're going to substitute what's in there with, okay, branch assigned, assigned to, and then just add to the end there, I guess, space dash must match a branch, must match a branch in the branches table. Oops, lowercase t on the, okay, so must match a branch in the branches table. Okay, and then we're going to save and close any tables that we have opened. Okay, so save and close, and save and close. Not sure why we had to have the, the branches um, and employees tables open, but okay. All right, then we're going to click the relationships button on the database tools here, and we're going to select the relationships, and we're going to select the branches table in the add tables uh, task pane. So branches selected. And click the Add Selected Tables button. Okay. Well, it's already okay. Oh, right down here at the bottom, Add Selected Tables. Okay. And then uh, select the Employees table and click the Add Selected Tables. Okay. And then we're going to click the X in the right corner of the Add Tables task pane and close it. And mm -hmm. then we're going to adjust the size of the table objects to see all the fields if needed. So we can. Pull it down like that. And I think the branches was the other one. Yeah. So now we can see all the fields. Um, then we're going to drag the branch field from the branches table on the top of the branch field of the employees table. So from the branches, select branch and drag it over to the branch field on the employees table and drop it. And that'll open up the uh, Edit Relationships dialog box. And then we're going to verify that the field names displayed are correct, which they are. And we're going to, um, if necessary, click on a field name and then click the drop down arrow to make any corrections. We don't need to make any corrections, so we're good. Then we're going to click the Enforce Referential Integrity. And we're also going to click the Cascade Update Related Fields. And then we're going to leave the Cascade Deleted Records blank or deselected. And the company doesn't, and we're doing that because the company doesn't want to delete employees just because they may close a branch. So that enables them to reassign employees. So then we're going to click on the Create button here. And that created that relationship between the branches and, or between the branches and the employees tables. Okay. And it says the one and infinity symbols display indicate that referential integrity is enforced and that there is a one to many relationship between the two tables. So there's a one for every one branch. There are many branches in the employee entries in the employees table. So you can. You have multiple employees per branch, so that makes sense, right? Okay, then it says save the changes to the relationship. So um, we're going to just right click on the relationships tab here and click save. And then it says to close the relationships design tab. So just click on this close button here. And then open the employees table in datasheet view. Okay, so open the employees, double click on the employees table there. And it says to uh, and enter the record in table 2-21 into the table uh, to test the new drop-down list. So we're going to click on the new record, new blank record here. And we're going to uh, put in employee ID 200 and then tab over and it's Timothy. And tab over the last name is Hanson. Tab over and it's Cameron Park. And tab over. And it should be insurance agent. And tab over. And here we should get a pull down. And we want the health and benefits. And tab over. And it should be 9 slash 15 slash 2022. And then tab over and put 3900 as the base salary. And just tab. Okay. And then it says save and close the table. So, or step 12. So I'm going to click Save and then close the table. 
And then open the branches table in datasheet view for step 13. So branches, right click, oh, double click to open it in datasheet. Datasheet view is the default uh, view. So if you double click on it, it opens it up in datasheet view. And then it says adjust the width of the field so that the entire field content shows for each field. Okay, so um, it's similar to Excel. When you're when you click on the heading there, when it becomes a double arrow, just double click and do that for each one of the fields. And this one's too big. Whoops. So let me click outside of here, escape. That's not letting. Okay, here we go. Okay. The other option is you can just right click on it and then. Um, Oh, no, you can't do that here, I guess. Mm, field width, yeah. So you click field width, and then just click best fit. Okay, so that'd be the same thing right here. Field width, click best fit. Didn't change because we'd already done the auto fit. Okay, so um, then we're going to um, click the, minor, uh, the plus sign to the left of the branch field for Cameron Park. Okay, and we'll see. Um, the 11 employees assigned to the Cameron Park branch. Okay, so there's 11 of them. You can tell down here the record navigator says one of 11, so that's good. And then we're going to click the minus sign to close that back up. And then for step 14, we're going to uh, preview the data records in the branches table before printing. So we have the branches table open, and we're going to click the print button in the file tab to display the uh, printing options. And then we're going to select the print preview button. And print preview opens the tab. The preview tabs opens and shows a preview of the, how the table will print. Then we're going to click the landscape button in the page layout section there to make it landscape. And uh, then the report should appear similar to that figure 282 in the 2-82 in the instructions, which it does. And then we're going to click close the print preview by clicking on that button there. And then save and close the branches table. So right click save and then just close it and then close the database and upload your file. So we'll do that. So we saved and closed our database. So we're going to click on the upload my file and select it from the downloads folder there, unless you saved it somewhere else. And then click yes, submit the file. And hopefully we got 100%. Pretty sure we did because there's some pretty good checks along the way. So we'll see very soon. And we got 100%. That's what we love to see. Okay, hopefully that helped you out. If it did, please click on the subscribe and like. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great rest of your day.